We will bring you facts without fear, without the politics of panic running rampant in the country. We're going to give you perspective and context and data and information. So I've been working in global health for about 20 years. And my specific technical specialty is in health systems and what happens when health systems experience severe shocks. If we're ranking sources of global health expertise on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 is some random person ranting on Facebook and 10 is the World Health Organization, I'd say you can probably put me at like a 7 or an 8. So keep that in mind as I talk to you. With the COVID-19 virus reaching more and more countries each day, it is possible that no corner of the world will be spared. Even as European health ministers prepare to meet on Friday, one infection was registered inside the European Council building itself. Not just towns and cities now, but the seats of governments and parliaments are in its path. I'll start with the basics here, because I think that's gotten lost in some of the media noise around COVID-19. But it's not the first time a disease of this nature has spread across the globe. It comes from a large family of viruses called coronaviruses. Some cause nothing more than a cold. <laughs> COVID-19 is known as a novel coronavirus because until December, we'd only heard of six coronaviruses. COVID-19 is the seventh. It's new to us. It just had its gene sequencing. It just got its name. That's why it's novel. If you remember SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, those were coronaviruses. And they're both called respiratory syndromes because that's what coronaviruses do. They go for your lungs. Coronaviruses are zoonotic, which means that they transmit from animals to people. Some coronaviruses, like COVID-19, also transmit person to person. The person-to-person -person ones travel faster and travel farther, just like COVID-19. Zoonotic illnesses are really hard to get rid of because they have an animal reservoir. Makeshift tents to treat the sick, fighting for their lives and their dignity. One hospital reportedly receiving a new patient every five minutes. Experts warning Italy is still two weeks away from the outbreak's peak, as more than 60 million people are urged to stay at home. Now for the less basic parts. This is not the last major outbreak we're ever gonna see. There's gonna be more outbreaks and there's gonna be more epidemics. That's not a maybe, that's a given. And it's a result of the way that we as human beings are interacting with our planet. Human choices are driving us into a position where we're gonna see more outbreaks. But it's also about the way we're pushing into the last wild spaces on our planet. Fires ravaging Brazil and its Amazon rainforest spilling out into Bolivia, Paraguay, and Peru. It's the scale of these fires that's absolutely huge. An unprecedented burn of a massive magnitude, we could be losing, in certain areas, as much as three soccer fields of jungle every single minute. The collection of tens of thousands of blazes engulfing an area two-thirds the size of the continental United States, virus burning from the equivalent of Detroit to Los Angeles. When we burn and plow the Amazon rainforest so that we can have cheap land for ranching, when the last of the African bush gets converted to farms, when wild animals in China are hunted to extinction, human beings come into contact with wildlife populations that they've never come into contact with before, and those populations have new kinds of diseases, bacteria, viruses, stuff we're not ready for. It is believed that many of the fires were started by farmers trying to clear land. Environmentalists say Bolsonaro's seeming support for the development of the Amazon over environmental practices may have emboldened farmers to burn land. We've seen a dramatic increase in deforestation in the Amazon uh, recently, and it is driven by humans. So-called lungs of the earth, much of it now choked in flames. We are talking about an estimated 10 percent of the world's global biodiversity. Well over 40,000 species, new ones being discovered every single day. That is all at risk. Most of the fires are so remote, it requires hacking through the nearly impenetrable terrain just to reach them. Going through this underbrush gives you a sense of why these fires are so hard to stop. 
So as long as we keep making our remote places less remote, the outbreaks are going to keep coming. We can't stop the outbreaks with quarantine or travel restrictions. That's everybody's first impulse. Let's stop the people from moving. Let's stop this outbreak from happening. Overnight, Disney, ABC's parent company, announcing they are closing Walt Disney World in Orlando and Disneyland Paris through the end of the month. Following the earlier announcement of Disneyland in California closing Saturday. So we're dealing with the absolutely not only unforeseen and uh, something on a level we have never seen in our lives. Now to the unprecedented shutdown of virtually all professional and college sports. The real world collided with the sports world and in less than 24 hours, athletic competition around the country came to an unprecedented 